All right, we are recording. Dun, 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 dun. What's our theme song? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to research a good song for that. <laughs> right? I'm like, I love your red. I brought my mustard here. So I'm just. Oh, look cozy. at that. We're so colorful. It's like we got the blues and the greens. And cozy couch conversations <laughs> brought to you by Leah Morrison and Crystal Jensen. I forgot my coffee upstairs, but that's Boom. all right. Go get it. I'm going to count and see how fast you can make it. Are you ready? Well, it's it's cold, so maybe I'll just go get my water. Okay, okay. on your mark. Are you going to count me? Like yeah, a, go. go. One, Mississippi. Two, Mississippi. Three, Mississippi. Four, Mississippi. Five, Mississippi. Six, Mississippi. Seven, Mississippi. Eight, Mississippi. Nine, Mississippi. Ten, Mississippi. Eleven, Mississippi. Twelve, Mississippi. Thirteen. You are like a ninja. Oh, she just eases in like, ooh, <laughs> ease and flow my massive I did the run and slide with my socks into the kitchen <laughs> like don't fall <laughs> oh I'm so excited to chat with you and we're actually just like recording one of our chats so uh you know our, our fellow people can kind of be a little fly on the wall I know right in our weirdness as you count and I race like we're children I like it a lot right okay so let's chat let's about all of this stuff am I allowed to swear <laughs> I think so so let's talk about bullshit. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So one thing that I know that has been coming up a lot is the myths of personal development and it drives me freaking crazy. And it's something that I've actually been struggling with since the very beginning. And I get a lot of resistance myself, but also resistance within clients. And that is the cliche of you have to love yourself before you can do anything and your life will take off. And it's crazy. It's absolute crap. So when you think about the myths of personal development, all of the different modalities say that you have to act a certain way, or it's because of a paradigm, or it's because of your ego, or it's because you're a victim or you're a savior. And there's like an obscene amount of labels that go into dismissing your emotional uh, capability of being whole yourself. And the pressure of who you should be versus who you really are. Mm -hmm. Well, even when you look at the, you know, I had a client ask me yesterday, did I manifest all of this stuff that happened to me? Because there is a victimization where we blame ourselves for everything that goes wrong in our life, or we point the finger outwards and we must have done something wrong. Why is my life so hard? I must have done something wrong in a past life. Or why can I get it? Can I move through this thought process with a money paradigm or a, you know, a partnership paradigm or something like that? And it, and when you want to call somebody on their own behavior, and I don't like the word calling out, it's more about calling in. You want to pull somebody That's in okay. to understand you a little bit instead of calling out. Uh, you get it back where it's your problem, not my problem. And there's no accountability on any, any side. Or your emotions don't matter, right? It's almost like, okay, you know what? That, that's just negative. Don't feed into it. And, but the root of it, there's no discussion around the root or the emotions or why this is, keeps coming up. And the pattern just keeps circling and circling and circling. Mm -hmm. And then it's almost like judging of yourself or always constantly trying to take that step to make yourself a little bit better because you're afraid of of how others see you because this is just your way of being and it's a, it's this vicious cycle, right? And it starts to eat away at you because you're just like, hey, well, I've tried that modality, I've tried that modality, I've tried that modality. And, you know, like my partner said to me one day, when are you just going to fucking realize, excuse my language, that you're amazing just the way you are? Yeah. Right? Always well, and there's a lack of acceptance. Yes. Absolutely. I read this book and I know we talked about which is what spurred this on. I read this book and it's by Marianne Power and it's called Help Me. And it's about this woman who goes, she's a, she's a writer and she's a journalist and, and not necessarily a journalist, but she writes articles and everything. And she goes on this journey of self-help. So she's going to try a different self-help modality every single month. Well, it ended up sending her into a crashing burn where she was very depressed and super anxious because every modality told her that this is what's wrong with you and none of them celebrated what was right. And this is what drives me crazy about the personal development world because you're constantly trying to fix what's wrong with you 
instead of flipping that mindset and really looking and empowering yourself through what's right. And when we do empower ourselves in a way where we are not dismissive of our emotional body, we are not dismissive of anybody else's trauma or, you know, I'm just going to send love and light over to that person because they have their stuff. It's very condescending and it misses the point entirely. So when we can switch that in and start to really look at ourselves with a lot of grace mm-hmm. and forgiveness and acceptance then we can start to move through those negative stories and those negative limitations in a much easier way. It doesn't have to be so fucking hard. No. Like it doesn't. And I like what you say, like celebrating, you know, the goodness, celebrating. And, you know, I look at the reflection of me and my parenting and my children, right? It's easy for us to to always like give, you know, feedback or say next time, or can you do this? Can you do that? And lately, we, as we talked before, I've been shifting a lot of my attention to their development on focusing on the effort. And the shift that I've seen is just like, oh, amazing. The ripple effect, you know, the practices that I'm doing, my oldest is now writing out her gratitudes. I'm sharing the good things that I see within herself and in her development. And it's just allowing her to completely expand into that good space, right? And we look at ourselves. Why is it so hard to to reference and refer back to ourselves those good things, right? I mean, or like the pouring gratitude into our spouses and see how that shifts, you know, for 30 days, just really talking about the good things that they do, you know, and, and little things where I'm like, I just went on a date last night, which was like the second date in eight, eight years. Was, and the first date was when he proposed. I'm like, well, I shouldn't say it. The, the date's planned. So I was like, oh my gosh, you've just planned a date. This is incredible. Like we just <laughs> had such a great time, but sh- pouring that gratitude, pouring the good, sharing the good. But why is it so hard to focus in on that for our own self? You know, why are we so hard on ourselves? Because that's what our environment teaches us to be. When we, we, you know, as children, especially up until maybe the last decade. And I will say up until the last decade, because we as children, for the most part, not everybody had a childhood like this, but for the most part, children were meant to be seen, not heard. And you, if you cry, I'll give you something to cry about. If you're angry, you can go to your room. If you're happy, get outside and play. Nobody wants to see you. Nobody wants to hear you. You just go do your thing. And now our children are, you know, there's helicopter parents and everybody's watching everything. And if you have any form of emotion, then you're dysregulated. You're not regulated yourself, which is total horse shit because that's how we are supposed to regulate. We have to climb into the emotion to regulate through the emotion. And then that emotion starts to pass through. We have to find acceptance to feel it. And we are taught through everybody, through society, through books, through Disney movies, through anything that you can see in society, we are taught that emotion is weakness. When in fact, it it is the biggest superpower of humanity. It is humanity. And when we can find acceptance for that emotion, even what we think are bad emotions, there's no such thing as bad emotions. It's how we actually view the emotion that's bad. But when we can find acceptance for those emotions, there is... It's so beautiful. Like anger is a really beautiful emotion if it's channeled in the right way. You know, if it's expressed in the right way, you know, we can yell and scream and stomp and go stomp around the neighborhood if you need to, or scream into a pillow and get that energy out of your body and expressed in a healthy way. And then the energy has gone and you're not leaking your, you know, your irritability and your distaste on every, you just start to leak. It's gross. (laughs) Or you start to get called names that you've never been called before. You're like, where did that come from? Right. It's like <laughs> reflecting on last week, you know, Leah, you know, you asked me, you know, are you happy in this? Are you happy in that? And I recognize that there's certain things in my world that I'm not happy with. So I get to have that choice to change. Right. And as, mm-hmm. if we just don't acknowledge those emotions and we keep pushing them down, pushing them down, pushing them down, that's where the dis ease comes in or also the triggering. When we talk about, you know, triggering as a human or a parent or whatever, it's interesting to look at the environment, right? It's like, okay, well, this is what's happening to me right now. And okay, well, let's reflect on each area of your world and recognizing that, okay, there's some things that I'm not happy about and that I actually have the ability to make those changes. Like how empowering is that? Like it starts with a choice. It starts with my own thoughts and beliefs, but I'm in control here. So I love those reflection moments where 
you know, you're really great at asking me questions to kind of peel back the layers to get to that vulnerable state to say, okay, what is actually truly happening right now? Where's that belief stemmed from? What types of situations? And, you know, when you're in it, it's like you're in this like torpedo bubble, right? You can't always see what's you're blinded well, you're by your blinders, the frontal right? Context. There's nothing else that exists when you're up here. That's your teenage life. You're just living <laughs> right. here, like headbutting everything that you walk into and nothing else exists. Right? And then That's after our conversations, do. I'm like, okay, I can now, <laughs> I can now get out of that space and actually look at it from the outside and recognizing that change starts and ends with me and that I have the ability and the choice and all the control, you know, to, to make those positive changes. So it's such a beautiful thing. A good thing to do is actually to recognize the steps to get there. And you and I have been working together for quite some time together and not to mention the greater friends. So you're my mentor as much as I am yours. And I, I believe that these types of friendships are so powerful because you can show up in all of the ugliness and still be seen and empowered through the, the positive. And one thing that people don't recognize is that to be able to move through a pattern to be able to move through any self-help modality to, to really recognize what works for you is that what works for somebody won't work for you, um, but to observe your behavior first. And you know, I was having a, a session with a client and she goes, I just realized um, observe has the word serve in it. And when you're observing yourself, you're being of service to yourself. I was like, hot damn, I gotta write that down. I repeated it like 10 times this week. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was such a huge reflection of her being in service of being of service to herself. So when we go through these personal development challenges or we're trying to expand the way that we feel or think, when we can first give ourselves one week and we just observe, just watch yourself and afterwards go, oh, I, you know, okay, I pulled the dick card there. Like I was not kind and I'm observing of it, but I'm not gonna do anything with it yet. I mean, if you wanna apologize, it's always advisable, but, you know, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to observe it. And then the next week you notice those patterns again and you try to interrupt it. You just try as much as you can, but you're still observing and being of service to yourself, which is you are the most important person in the world. And then when you start to get into a pattern of interrupting that, you actually start to see it before it comes. So there's these steps that have to be taken to get to where you don't behave that way. Right. And so why do people always go into the same relationships? Why do they come keep coming up against the same arguments? Because you're not observing yourself yet. And you eventually and I love that. And eventually what I've recognized for myself is that you start to get ahead of it. Where you're like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh self. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> right. It's like you can understand where that rooted belief comes from, or it's a subconscious programming. And mm -hmm. then you start to become aware of it ahead of the game. And sometimes, I mean, we're still ever evolving and learning each and every day, right? Yeah. Sometimes I can catch myself and sometimes I just go straight down that rabbit hole and reflect <laughs> afterwards because just I'm laughing also, around. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? Oh my God. There's my phone. I need to call Leah. But it's really interesting because as we move through and then now I'm an observer, I can see also the patterns that happen. And I talk a lot about my children because, you know, for those watching, I do have children around me in my own family and also in the center each and every day where I can start to see where, you know, me raising my own children, my beliefs are now embedded into them. And to take that step back and, and look at my oldest who's 10, right? And what I was going through during her early years of development and seeing the reflection in her that I can reflect upon myself and then my middle son and then my youngest, they're all so uniquely different. But when I look at the behaviors or I look at certain things that are happening or I look at the way that they're talking and I'm now more aware of my interactions and my behaviors, I'm like, oh, you got that from me. <laughs> <laughs> Or you hear yourself, you're like, oh, my mother just came through. Right, exactly. <laughs> like strip back another layer of generational, you know, paradigms or beliefs or subconscious programming, whatever you want to yeah. label it as, right? But it's very mm -hmm. beautiful to get to that point of awareness and reflection. And mm -hmm. I know you've really helped me kind of uh, look at that on occasion. <laughs> You always need somebody to call us on our bullshit. You're like, um, no, let's take that a little bit deeper. Let's take that a little bit deeper. But when you're in it, I mean, this is why I also come to you and my other mentors, because we always need somebody to show us ourselves in the best possible way. And when 
when we, you and I are talking about this, it's about really finding the beauty in it and not the self-deprecating, oh, I'm such an idiot. Why did I do that? And really hating on yourself. And that's with that personal development. That's the caveat of the, you know, the spiritual community, the personal development community. You know, it drives me crazy with the spiritual community because there is a lot of victimization and finger pointing and, you know, even with astrology and I am a very spiritual person and I love astrology, but there's also this, Oh, Mer Mercury's in retrograde. That's why I'm behaving this way. And that's your excuse to be an asshole or it's a, your excuse to not hold yourself responsible for your behavior. And we always find the excuse, these excuses because we like things a lot easier for ourselves. We're always going to find the loophole, right? Give me the cliff notes version. I'd rather not study. Thank you very much. And we do, I like that too. If it's not easy, I'm not going to do it. And I know that about myself. That's something that I've accepted. So I really cultivated what I love and ignored what I don't love within this type of community because that's works for me and finding what works for you in a positive mind frame is how you can actually move through it, right? Absolutely. I love it's that. It's so important to do that. Well, this conversation just brings up so many like previous conversations, right? <laughs> Where it's just like, you know, we'll keep it G rated, but it's very interesting because, you know, my subconscious programming and the awareness around it really affects everybody around me right? So if I yeah. choose in that moment to think of things and move through it and, and change my thoughts, so circumstance arise, I change my thoughts and I move down in a more positive direction. You know, it's that, that flick of a switch where if I'm not catching myself in the moment after the circumstance, I could just go down that other path and the outcome be a lot more negative. But what's interesting about it is that, you know, as it's almost like practicing that awareness muscle, right? We can be that subconscious awareness and say, okay, conscious awareness, subconscious awareness. I mean, you know, the subconscious mind just works by itself. But the moment I go, hey, wait a second. And I catch myself. The outcome is always a lot more beautiful, but there's days where I just don't catch myself. And then I'm like, at the end of the day, what just happened? And mm -hmm. I can reflect back to that moment where I chose to go down that rabbit hole. I chose to go down that path. And, you know, there's certain things now that I make sure I do every single day to rebalance my energy, to make sure that I'm being true to myself and caring for my thoughts and caring for my own emotions so that I can continue to move down, you know, a more positive approach because it also has the ripple effect to everybody around me. Mm -hmm. There's this quote that I need to find on my phone so I can read it properly because I, it has everything. Um, I, Mel Robbins uh, is somebody that I listen to quite a bit. And she said this in one of her audio books that I was listening to yesterday. In order to get control of your life, you must first understand what you do when you feel afraid. And really looking at that has everything to do with what you were just saying, because we get afraid, therefore we won't do a certain step. And what is the end result of that? What are you so scared of on the other end? Somebody looking at you, your opinions, other people's opinions, judgment, failure, but that all boils down to your opinion of yourself. And the only opinion of worth is whose? Your own. Yeah. Nobody else's opinion means jack shit. Because if you have a high opinion of yourself and how you're moving through this, okay, today was sucked. I'm going to go have a conversation about it with whoever I, I was sucky to. And then I'm going to have a conversation that I was sucky to myself. Um, and then I forgive myself and I accept it as one of my humanity days. I'm just being human in all of my flossomeness, right? Mm -hmm. And then you carry on. That means you're still holding yourself in a high standard uh, or high opinion, not a high standard, high opinion of yourself. Therefore, anybody who comes to talk to you going, they are going to believe that you are of worth as well. So the moment you feel that worthiness that you can be and behave without excuse, but with accountability and with positivity and with personal, emotional, you know, what's the word I'm trying to think of right now? Concussion In, brain. I've been forgetting. Integrity. So integrity. Thank you. I'm just like your word match. <laughs> oh, in your in your group coaching sessions or you're on there doing, you're like, you ask Leah anything. You're like, oh, what's that word? And I'm like, I know. <laughs> Two syllables, one word. <laughs> 
Because the one thing is that concussion brain, that trauma to my head, I forget just random words. I'm like, what is it? What is it? And I'll search. I can feel it right here. I can feel it. I'm like, it's coming. It's coming. And then Crystal will be like, oh, oh. <laughs> perfect. Beautiful. I absolutely love that. I, you know, I'm reflecting on the practice and I speak from the eye quite a bit because I reflect on you know, where I was and where I am. And I used to call it like going into first, second, third, fourth, fifth year. And I would repeat yeah. myself as if, you know, not being heard, but then it's like, well, I got to say it again and say it again and say it again and say it again. And then by the, you know, I'm just like, wah, 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 wah. and I'm just like, I'm heading into fifth year here. I just keep going. And it started to create havoc in my relationships and especially relationships with myself. And, you know, I had to really peel back the layers and the root of, of not being heard kept coming up for me. And it was like, well, why does this keep coming up for me? Because I actually wasn't hearing myself. I actually wasn't investing time in myself or hearing my thoughts or feeling supported in myself, my own, you know, self-care and, and honoring those emotions and feelings. So I felt like just blah, 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 blurting it all out, but like, nobody's hearing me. So I'm just going to say it again. I'm going to revisit it again. I'm going to go down that hole again. And it's really toxic in my relationships with my friends, my family, my partner. So the awareness piece that I've been able to, I mean, not, it's not perfect, but to be able to have, it's like, okay, hey, I've said it. And now I ask for clarity, right? Did you hear how I was feeling? Like, are you right? And I ask very qualifying questions because why it's sold so many ones. <laughs> Some qualifying questions if you're unsure. <laughs> And now I find myself moving with ease because I've been able to express myself. I'm being heard, mm -hmm. but ultimately yeah. I'm hearing myself and yeah. I'm sitting with those thoughts and emotions within. Well, and it's, it's making sure that the people that you, we tend to talk at everything instead of talking to everything and having a conversation, being inside of it, instead of being on the outside going, well, I want to talk about this, but I'm actually not going to do it. So I'm just going to talk in circles and just pray to God that somebody figures out. And if you don't figure it out, that's your problem, not my problem. And it ends up being this convoluted, very layered pile of, you know, a tower of shit. So when you actually start a conversation, hey, I need to bring something up. Are you in the space to hear me? That immediately is going, I'm respecting your headspace over here. And so are you in the space to hear me? And hoping that the other person will be like, yeah, or uh, actually, no, no, not today I'm not. I'm not in the space to hear you today. And that is a really beautiful way that we could be like, okay, let me know because I do have to chat about this. So let me know when you're in the space that we can have an open conversation or an open dialogue and really respecting the language that comes out of your mouth going, well, no, I want to talk to you right now. I need to get this off my chest. I don't give a shit what you are feeling right now. It's about me but it ends up being about the other person, but it ends up being about me. Like it's not, it's not conductive in any way, shape or form for, for harmony within a conversation, even with our children. I noticed that with my 12 year old or even, you know, my six year old now, when he's upset, he just becomes a mute right now. He's just stops talking. You cannot get him to talk. So I sit beside him or I lay on the floor with him until he's ready. And then I'll ask if he wants a hug. And sometimes I'm sitting there for 20 minutes. And he's sitting there crying or having a temper tantrum or moping, but I'm not leaving him because I'm giving him that space and giving him the time to work through whatever he's got to work through. Well, we need to do that as adults too. You need to do that for yourself going, oh, I'm not in the space to talk to anybody today. <laughs> right. And warning anybody, you know what, I'm just, I'm having a rough day today. So I'm just going to, I'm going to ask for a wide berth as I walk through the house today. <laughs> a giant wide bubble. berth, wide berth. <laughs> You know, we don't have those flashing beep, beep, pissed off moms coming through. Beep, beep, like everybody just move out of the way. <laughs> Zip it. I love that. I love but when that. we can respect that within our children, within our coworkers, and even within the grocery store, you can tell when somebody's had a bad day. You just smile. Just give them space. You know, when somebody's being cut off and they're flipping you the bird in traffic, just give them space. It's not personal. They're just projecting. They're leaking out all of the uglies. You and your leak word today. <laughs> Oozing. <laughs> Ooze. Oh, that's so disgusting. 
Oh, great analogy now that I've like visualized. Um, no, I, I think this conversation is so beautiful. And, you know, we feel sometimes that, you know, I'm speaking for myself and maybe some of our listeners here today that we need to be a certain way or we need to show up a certain way. And to be able to just remove those expectations of ourselves and recognize that we're ever evolving humans, we're learning, we are, you know, growing every each and every day. And to just give ourselves a little bit of a break, yeah. right? We're this having a space. shitty day. We're having a shitty day. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but nothing being wrong aware, with you. right. Nothing wrong with you, but being, you know, how do you move through that shitty day? Right. And how do you honor that within yourself? Like you say, right. Every, you know, I need a little bit of space, like voicing that to, to those yeah. around you so that it's honored within yourself. Like for me, I just love to go fill up the bath. Like last night was like, we went on this date night and then we went and grabbed some groceries. We came home, everywhere was melting down. It was just like, whoa, well, you must've had some TV time with grandpa here. <laughs> it's like so grateful for that, but they're all just like, blah. And I just, I looked at Ezra. I was like, peace out. I need to go have a bath. And he's like, yeah. So I was like, I, he honored that. And I was just like, I love you even more. <laughs> I <was> just like, <laughs> I needed to check out because I could feel inside of me. Like it just, my day, I was just done. And I, you know, made sure the children, all their emotions were, were honored. And then I was like, I'm out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it felt That's really so funny to be able to take that time. Well, just having somebody recognize that you need this space that happened to me with my boyfriend, I was making breakfast for the kids and I was, woke up rough, recovering from the concussion and still have some rough mornings. And uh, I was buttering the, the bread for my son's lunch. And he just comes slowly up to me and he slowly takes the knife out of my hand and then just go sit down. Your coffee is waiting. And I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? And he's like, you're clearly need a little bit of space this morning. I got breakfast. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, this is wonderful. Because somebody saw... And when you start to communicate in a healthy way, you really start to pick up on cues that you normally wouldn't have because you're picking them up on yourself. I knew I woke up rough. <laughs> I just don't, I'm just gonna butter the bread. <laughs> it's like butter I'm, flying everywhere. I'm not putting anger into your lunch meat. It's not gonna happen. Oh my gosh. But when we honor that within ourselves and you doing that and, but you've taught him how to respond to that also, because you've been moving through this personal development journey. I want to touch on, um, before we wrap up, I want to touch on gaslighting and what it actually means. And because when people are called, um, on being a gaslighter, they get very angry about gaslighting we gaslight ourselves all of the time and what that means is about blaming somebody for your behavior that's what gaslighting is right or trying to convince you that your emotions are not worthy of being felt or trying to tell you that you actually don't matter in the grand scheme of things and just Absolutely. need to relax i mean the worst thing that you can say to anybody when they're having anxiety just chill relax or it actually really shuts angry. you right down where you're just it's like, dismissive. yeah. And then your yeah. emotions, you don't want to talk about it. You don't want to feel it. It's just shut down. Mm -hmm. So in the, the, I think gaslighting, it's a really great way of, exp of if the explanation is good, but it really boils down to dismissive. That's the word that should be used a lot more than gaslighting because, hmm. I don't appreciate being dismissed right now because my feelings are valuable. Whether you think that they're wrong or not, this is how I feel. So let's communicate and how to work. Can we meet somewhere in the middle? Because anytime you're interacting with anybody, it is important for me to show up a hundred percent of my 50% of that conversation. Right. And if I'm not able to show up a hundred percent of that 50% of my con that conversation or that partnership or that, you know, relationship with your parents or your, your, spouses, ex-spouses. I mean, I have to deal with that with my ex-husband all the time. I got a hundred percent of my 50% of this conversation. I'm going to show up with a smile. I'm going to try really, really hard, but I'm only going to do my 50%, my hundred percent of my 50% because then I know that I'm acting with my emotional integrity. Right. And so when there's gaslighting, you being called as a gaslighter, if somebody has said that to you, stop gaslighting me. 
really take a moment and go, I'll, I'm going to sit with that for a minute and take a look. Because it's not something that's wrong with you. It's an automatic reaction. We do that to other people as a way of protecting ourselves because we have a really hard time at looking in because when we look in, we think that something's wrong with us, which is total horseshit because nothing is wrong with anybody. The only thing that is wrong is that you think that something's wrong with you. Therefore, you're gonna project and put up walls and you're not gonna be able to communicate effectively and the line goes on and on and on and on and on. So when you come up against the word gaslighting or narcissism or anything like that, really go into the observation mode of your own self and of the other person. And if they're doing that, then please, I don't, I don't appreciate my feelings being dismissed right now. So powerful. that's effective communication. It's a boundary, right? And it's a really, really important one. And that's removing the negative connotation under any form of communication. Yeah, absolutely. And being on the flip side, you know, how does that feel when your feelings are being dismissed? How does that feel when you're, when you're being told, you know, like, don't focus on that. And it's, mm -hmm. and it just brews. And then the pattern revisits in mm -hmm. other areas in, in, in the, in your world, right? Because it's not being addressed or it's not being felt or that feeling of unbeing, of not being heard. So it's this vicious cycle. And, you know, what I love about our conversations is that empowerment to ask those qualifying questions or those saying those statements, right? Because you're standing up for yourself. And, yeah. you know, through my development and, and some, you know, experiences that I've had in the past is that if I don't speak up and I don't share those feelings or those emotions, then I just keep going back to that place of, of not being heard, but I'm letting it happen to myself. Mm -hmm. So I have that ability and that control over my own voice to stand mm -hmm. up and, and really the forgiveness just comes back to forgiving myself for letting it happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is a beautiful reflection. So being able to say those things and stand up for oneself is so empowering because at the end of the day, if it continues to happen over and over again, you're innately the one that is allowing it to happen and you can set those boundaries. It's like boundary number 42,562. <laughs> <laughs> Another way to do it, and I, you know, as you were talking, I was thinking about conflict management because a lot of people are fearful of setting a boundary because of the confrontation that comes into it. So it makes their heart race. They start to get anxious. They'd rather just not. It's easier to not say anything than to dive into the confrontation of what you expect or assume that somebody is going to behave. And a lot of us do that. Like there's certain things that I won't bring up around my mom <laughs> because I assume or know by a pattern of behavior, this will not be a productive conversation. But really understanding, like when you're having those types of conversations to ask, the, ask yourself the questions to, right? To come back and be, I hear you are saying this, is that what you meant? That qualifying or clarifying, whatever you wanna call it, conversation, a question, so, you know, and I've gotten into this a lot with my ex-husband because he'll say something and I automatically take it the wrong way because of the story that's going in my head because of how we fell apart as a, as a family, right? As a partnership, we started talking at each other and speaking two different languages. Therefore, we couldn't get along and our relationship came to an end. But if in that time that I learned going, okay, I hear you saying this, this is what I think you mean. What do you actually mean? Nine times out of 10, the intention is good. We are just not speaking the same language. So that comes at talking at each other, not talking to each other. So it's coming up with that question and for yourself, what story am I telling myself right now? So beautiful. Right? Especially yeah. when my mom talks, you know, I'll be like, mom, what's going through, <laughs> what's going through your head right now? Because this is how I'm feeling. How are you feeling? And making sure that as you address it within you, you're addressing it within the other person. And that also helps limit the confrontational ugh, feeling, conflict Absolutely. management. I hear you were saying this. Is this what you are feeling like I am doing? Okay, my intention was actually this. Absolutely. Well, and so in experience, <laughs> taking that a step further, you know, asking those qualifying questions to my, my children, right? So all of a sudden I have a young one that's having a, a meltdown and we're addressing what's happening inside. And I ask the question, so what story are you telling yourself right now? 
And it would be like, well, because we didn't sit down and play Lego, I feel like you don't love me anymore. Meanwhile, it was just time to transition for bedtime, right? So it's such a powerful question to ask ourselves, but also to ask, you know, those around us, because a lot of the times as we move through parenting, we move through the situations in our world, we can reflect upon, okay, I'm too telling myself a story right now. And is that story the truth? Or is it just something, you know, that, that belief system that's embedded in my subconscious deep down, but to be able to share that with, with, you know, my middle son and him say, yeah, mom, this is how I'm feeling. And this is what I'm telling myself right now allows us to nip it right away. Mm -hmm. And to be able to come back to that place of being able to, to clarify with him and, and help him recognize that we still love you unconditionally. You know, we, this is transition time. We're moving on to this, but tomorrow let's sit down and let's make some time and let's do the Lego. And it was just beautiful because as I start to ask myself that and ask everybody else around me, those questions, there's no room for that, that rabbit hole story that we can just easily go down and live yeah. in that, you know, either victimhood or that trauma story or whatever it is, we can just come back right away and have that clarifying and be able to move forward in a totally different direction. It's so important because the stories that we tell ourselves, and if we learn early, we'll be like, oh yeah, this is what's going through my head, you know, and being able to, no, 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 no. And that I think is the most beautiful thing about raising children right now, because they're going to grow up actually effectively communicating effectively. Absolutely. You know, my 12 year old son, um, he was wondering if it was still weird that he wants to snuggle with me at the end of the night because he's my size. <laughs> it's going to be bigger than me soon. And I was like, no, it's only weird if you think it's weird. Like if you are not comfortable, then we won't snuggle. But if you need that physical contact, buddy, I'm your mom. I'm here for you. Right. And so he'll just be standing there in the hallway sometimes and he'll, his signal is going like this and just putting his hands out and I'll walk in and give him a hug. And then that's it. Or he gets in the car and from picking him up after school when he's in grade seven, you know, the ages of 12 to 15 are the hardest ages of your life, in my opinion, because your brain is on rapid fire. Hormones are acting up, you know, it, it's a really, really difficult time. And he gets in the car sometimes and I'll actually ask him, do you want me to hold your hand? Yes. And we'll hold hands and I won't pressure him. Do you want to talk? No. Okay. And we're, we're good, but it's holding space for those moments for him to hold space for himself. And sure enough, he ends up talking about it or figuring it out. But that when you do that for your children, when anybody does that for their children, they end up learning how to do that for themselves. We, we learn more when we teach it. Modeling behavior, girlfriend. <laughs> Practice what you preach. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Look at us in our little first conversation on camera. Ooh. I like it. I like it. I like it too. And my slippery socks. I don't think I'm going to slide on my socks anymore. I, I, at least not without a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Oh yeah. We were going to do our little finger dancing. Maybe you take a little, uh, your little hips are taking a break. There you go. Boom. Yeah. My hips are taking a break today. I'm about to post a little reel about my son. You can see my 12 year old's little butt bounce through the video and right. This is what I was going to do today. So it's like, make yourself like alive. a little, a little face on there, like little eyeballs and stuff. And then like, come on with your little tune so that, you know, your hips don't <laughs> right here. Look at, he's got a little hat. E -e 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 -e. <laughs> <laughs> All right, girlfriend. Oh. Much Thanks love. For chat. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you again soon.